Now, if there's one thing that I really do actually respect about Mark Hamill so far throughout this year of 2023 and even last year of 2022, he's been a lot more direct and vocal with the Star Wars fan base, especially with, of course, the hardcore fans and a lot of the media outlets out there that have really been pressing him on questions about the future of The Mandalorian, about the future of the Star Wars franchise in general. This is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you're new and like this video to see future Star Wars updates. I'm also on Twitter at Mike Zero One. I thank you also very much for the great and kind support. Now that brings us to exactly what's really going on with the Skywalker saga. Now we know that John and Dave are doing incredible things so far with bringing back Legends and, com and combining it with the Disney canon and how that's going to coexist and specifically how they're going to find a balance for that. And that's one thing that a lot of fans are really looking forward to as well. But let's really just put something clear here is that what Mark Hamill is about to say is that there's a lot of things that are coming to fruition that's going to shift around the timeline of the Skywalker saga and how a lot of it is going to be reset in various ways. So let's tap into exactly what Mark Hamill had to say, what he had to tease and confirm a couple of things here and there, and what it really means for the Favloni universe. That's what I like to call it, you know. So John and Dave have all these different privileges over at Lucasfilm. They have a lot of creative control as well as a lot of financial control over many of the upcoming projects, uh, be it TV shows or the comics and the books, whatever it may be. A lot of that is being controlled creatively by John and Dave, and that's one thing that I like about them. And at the very least, I gotta give at least a little bit of credit to Bob Iger, even though I'm very much uh, critical over him as a person when he comes to, you know, working things out with Disney Star Wars. At least he's allowing Favreau and Filoni to do their work. But anyways, moving on to the real exciting stuff is that with Disney and Lucasfilm now preparing to make big announcements at Celebration and D23, they are also getting ready to develop new shows from Favreau and Filoni. However, in a recent interview with Mark Hamill, when he was being questioned about The Mandalorian, he had something very exciting to tease and reveal to the fans. He stated the following, I have been in talks with John and Dave, and what they have planned for everything is just fascinating. They have the right tools and techniques that they will be applying to this franchise to essentially reset or reboot the Skywalker saga in a sense, in comparison to how Disney wanted to treat it beforehand. They are giving it a complete makeover by introducing Legends characters and how they are going to impact Luke Skywalker's life and his journey. I can say this with no ego and no exaggeration, that when they are giving the Skywalker saga a fresh restart, I mean it. They are doing things that Disney would have absolutely refused to do in the last couple of years. They have found the right strategy to completely shift the timeline and what happens in between episodes 6 and 7, and yes, there will be some consequences, such as some of the lore for the sequels shifting around and changing, and the like, but that's just how it goes. Now let me just stop right here for one second based on what Mark Hamill is actually providing to the fans before we get to the next thing that he says. Now, the fact that a lot of these Legends characters coming into the story are going to impact Luke Skywalker's life, what he says there, without a doubt, is what you know we have been alluding to, what we have been talking about, what John and Dave are up to. They are already well into the works of bringing in Mara Jade to be portrayed by Karen Gillan, and that's going to be happening in Mando Season 4, and even future Mandalorian spin-offs to really kind of kickstart that whole era of Luke having a love life and stuff like that. Even Mark Hamill teases this later on. We're going to cover that as well in a second. But things like this are the things that the fans respect. A lot of the material from the Thrawn trilogy, from the, the New Jedi Order books, from the Shadows of the Empire books... Uh, those are the books that I would suggest that you guys read up on if you guys really want to get some kind of baseline on, baseline of knowledge for, of course, what's about to actually be thrown in live action form by John and Dave. So anyways, we already know that Ezra's coming into the picture, Thrawn is a big deal, even Timothy Zahn is actually looking over at John and Dave's work to give it the okay, and he did. He actually has been 
raving about what John and Dave are doing behind closed doors. He's very happy about that. But the thing about Mark Hamill right now is he's really putting it out there that John and Dave are on a roll when it comes to these massive plans to essentially reset the Skywalker saga in comparison to what Disney was going to do beforehand. You know, like just a couple of years ago, Disney was very much strict that they wanted Luke to never have a wife or a love interest or even a child at that. They did not want to continue the Skywalker bloodline at all. And that's exactly what they're all doing right now. They are going to give Luke a love life. They already have plans to give Luke Skywalker a son. John and Dave are up to that as well, by the way. To basically really expand the Skywalker bloodline into a different generation. And when Mark Hamill says how there will be consequences of how it impacts the sequel trilogy lore, I think he's definitely alluding to that plan that John and Dave have of incorporating the son of Luke. Because then you're going to wonder to yourselves, right, in the sequel movies, where is the son of Luke? What's going on here? Is he in hiding? Did Luke keep him a secret? Who knows? They could absolutely shift things around and retcon a couple of things. It's going to come off as a little strange, sure, but they're going to have to do what they have to do because these movies exist. They're there. You know, you can't just wipe them clean like that because there's actually quite a number of people that do support them. Uh, not the majority, though. But there are people out there that do support them through and through, and Disney is still sticking by them for some reason. But, like I say, my point of view on the sequels, it has its good moments. It's not just a good trilogy, though, from start to finish on a consistent level. It's just not. But anyways, moving on to the next thing, he goes on to state, I am beyond excited to share further things, and I actually am, it's actually quite painful keeping things a secret, haha. <laughs> but they are looking into great things such as Luke's love life, his new students, and new lore surrounding his Jedi Academy as well. It's going to be very impressive to say the least. Everyone is going to be thrilled with disbelief of what is going to happen. Now, the thing about this is that we already know that John and Dave are up to something very special when it comes to his Jedi Academy. We already know that storyboards have already been completed for Mando 4, in which it throws in a second Jedi Temple on Yavin 4 that Luke Skywalker actually controls. And so basically it's about to be made canon that Luke has two Jedi Temples, one on Asus that you saw in Book of Boba Fett, and you're going to have another one that's more for the older Jedi students, like Kyle Katarn-esque age, over at Yavin 4. And by the way, they are planning to bring in Kyle Katarn, we talked about this. Uh, about a year and a half ago. It's still on, it's still in the works. It is happening. So if you guys have not played the Jedi Outcast video games, and if you don't really know who Kyle Katarn really is, uh, go ahead and search him up. It's a very interesting character. Uh, one of Luke Skywalker's best Jedi students yet. So anyways, I'm very intrigued to hear what each and every one of you guys have to say about all of this below in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.